Welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Channel 5 and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. Before we get started, please consult your doctor before doing this or any exercise program. It's meant to challenge you, but not too much, and we want you to go at your own pace and have fun. So, let's get started. Let's get ready to move. You'll need a sturdy chair, uh, a rubber ball, if you have one, and or an exercise tubing or rubber band. If you don't have any of these things, no worries. We're working on ways to get you some. But I'm going to put on a little music so we can get ready to move. chair to be able to use it as your safety check or balance support uh, but have nothing under your feet to trip you up. So, uh, listen to your body. If anything hurts, don't do it. But let's just start with some gentle range of motion movements. So whether you are in your seat or on your feet, just keep moving at your own pace. Breathe and use best posture. The goal of this class is to meet you where you're at, hopefully safely at home, at your own abilities right now, and to make your movements easier. Let's ease into some shoulder rolls. Hurts, you can always reduce the range of motion or just go back to the last movement that felt good to you. If everything's feeling fine, you can make it a little bigger. But do sit or stand tall. It makes more room for your lungs to do their job, breathe, and get that good oxygen flowing through your blood, through your whole body, and your brain. I bet you already knew that good activity, gentle aerobic activity, is also the best brain exercise. The brain needs lots of oxygen. So, have fun. Keep moving, the opening and closing your chest. Use your best posture, and by all means, keep your exercise safe and simple. Kiss. Keep it safe and simple. Now, at any time, if you feel wobbly or dizzy, you can return to your chair or stay in your chair. You'll get benefit whether you're in a seat or on your feet. Okay? We've got that blood flowing. We've been doing a little bit of movement in the air, maybe crossing the body and adding a little rotation. But we're going to continue to warm up in our chair, where we can do some other exercises. And I'll be demonstrating things both standing and seated, because you're the only one who knows how you're feeling and what you're abilities are today. So, let's just march it out. We're going to be working on the ABCs. Agility, balance, coordination, but we're going to be doing some intervals, about 10 minutes each, of some cardiovascular, gentle, low-impact movements, whether we're seated or standing, and some strength. That's where we're going. But let's just make sure we can sit down safely. Simple, yes. Easy, maybe not. So I want to demonstrate a safe way for you to sit down, otherwise known as squatting. If you get your legs really close to a chair that's not on wheels and it's not going to scooch away from you, and you have this nice 
wide base, and you can feel the chair with your heels very near the front legs. Hinge your hips back and keep your head up. Imagine a glass of water on each shoulder. You can do a small range of motion with your squat. Paying attention to keep your head up, maybe spotting a point across the wall. Getting your hips back. Using a chair with arms might be a good choice for you if you have trouble with those last few inches. But we want to get all the way down to the chair. Um, we're going to continue to warm up. Sitting tall and just stretching our legs out. Good. Just right and left. It's good to be here with you today. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Let's work on coordinating our arms and our legs. How about the opposite arm? So left arm with the right leg, right arm with the left. Good. And if it feels good sitting here at the edge of your seat, pull your navel in and squeeze your quadricep muscles and flex your foot. Oh, I forgot to point out the other thing you probably would like to have is some water in a non breakable container, preferably tucked under your chair or very close by. Now let's see if we can limber up our ankles and our wrists for the flex point flex. Ankles and wrists are very important joints for our activities of daily living. How about one more each side? And then we're just going to gently settle that right leg down. Make a nice stable table out of your left thigh. Extend your spine upward and hinge gently forward, not too far. Keeping your chins up figuratively and literally. Maybe your toes and your fingers up too. And down. Up. Good. Pull the navel in and sit back as you tuck your knee in toward your chest. Unless it hurts your hip. Maybe you had a hip replacement and your hip doesn't fold much more. You can wiggle your ankle on the ground. Good. Pull your navel in. Sit up. That's a good exercise right there. Now let's try stretching out that left leg. Supporting our spine by bracing with our abdominals, breathing. If lengthening your arm hurts, you can shorten that lever and soothe your shoulder. Keeping your spine long keeps it strong. If your shoulder's fine, you can reach out. Lifting those toes and fingers up and lowering them, but do keep that spine long and your head above the level of your heart. Good. Pull the needle in like you're zipping up tight trousers. And stretching through the hip. Liberating that ankle. Check your shoelaces. Okay, let's see. We're going to get started with our first interval of gentle aerobic activity. But I wanted to show you that you can do it in your chair. So I'll preview it here and then it's your choice, as always, you have options, to stand up and continue standing until you feel like you need to sit down. I'm going to cue you often for three things. Posture, because best posture improves our balance and our ability to move with greater ease, good things. And then hydration. When we do get things down a little off the floor, we want to step to the side, lean to the side to get our water. There's your health. Happiness is hydration. And then I'm also going to cue you about perceived exertion. And we will use a scale of 1 to 10 to gauge our own ex exertion level. So a 1 would be, okay, ready to go. Come on, let's move already, right? And uh, a 10 would be, oof, I am totally out of breath. I can't even really talk. I must stop immediately. You know how you're feeling, so I'm trusting you 
Pay attention to your body. And if it hurts, don't do it. And our happy goal for our aerobic activity, which will be about 10 minutes today, is a four to a seven. If you're feeling like, oh, I might not be able to do this much longer, then that's going to be like an eight. So if you're able to talk, that's also a good test of a good intensity level for you. Okay. That being said, here's a preview of our first little cardio pattern. Um, I'm going to call this out, out, in, in. You can do it in your chair, stepping out to the right, stepping out to the left, stepping in, and we can do it even faster. Out, out, in. We can do it even faster. Out, out, in, in. Mm, if you like, you could do it even faster. Out, out. And some of you might be able to just go on a stampede. So you can do that in your chair, yeah, of course. But if you like, you could try it in the air. If you're going to stand up, do your heels in, get your hips back. Take a deep breath. If you feel dizzy at any time, carefully, mindfully come back to your seat or stay in your chair. Okay. I'm going to be behind my chair. I suggest you get there too. Check your area. Make sure if you had a ball, it's not under your feet. No little Dr. Cats either. Best posture. And let's get started with that pattern. Super slow. Step out and put your weight in that right foot and your left. Step in, put your weight equal. Let's do that again. Out. Out. In. Let's do it a little bit faster. Out, out, in, in. Good, stay at this pace. Being mindful of your posture, knowing you can touch your chair for a balance check, and putting your weight equal if you're right in your left foot. One more time at this slow pace. Let's go a little faster. Out, out, in, in. I'm going to call this tempo. You can move your arms in that cross-crawl fashion. That would be great for your brain and your coordination. But you've always got your chair if you need it. Good. Breathe and enjoy. Now, we don't need to go any faster yet. Let's put a little bit of a brain game on this. Let's think of, and let's use later on, our own phone number and then maybe a best friend or a loved one's phone number. We're going to think of the last four of that phone number, okay? And we're going to say it to this beat of our feet, whether we're holding on to our chair or not. Forwards and then backwards. Here's what it sounds like. This is my phone number. Two, three, seven, nine, nine, seven, three, two. Get it? You try it. Out loud. Good. All right, if you didn't get it, let's try it with our best friend or our loved one's phone, uh, last four of their phone number. Ready? Here's what it sounds like. 4140. Oh, 0414. You try it. Out loud so you can pass the talk test. How are you doing so far? Good. Do you want to go a little faster? Maybe you're already running. <laughs> Let's try it. Out loud. Remember, you got your chair. If you need it, don't run away from it. Best posture and breathing. You can go super fast if you like. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do that, though. How about you? How are you feeling on that scale of 1 to 10? You feel like slowing down? Good. Awesome. Let's take a breath. And let's put a little bit of balance work in here. Use your left hand near your chair and take your beautiful, tall, straight posture. 
to a diagonal. Pull the navel in and see if you can float that right foot. Now we're leaning to our pizza. Drawing the knee closer to the elbow. Balancing. Also doing a lot of stability core work. Woo! Let's try that on the other side. But first, let's do another interval of our out, out, in, in. This time, let's go to the left first. Ready? Step out to the left. To the right. Weight is equal. In. In. A little faster. Out. Out. Best posture. Out. Out. How about to tempo? Out, out, in. Good. Ah, let's do another brain thing. Research shows that if we are moving mindfully in a safe place, in a safe manner, while doing some mental tasks, it helps stimulate neuroplasticity or the generation of new connections. That's an important thing. All right, so this time, let's think of a four-letter name. The name of a loved one, or a friend, or a famous person, or just a four-letter name. And we're going to spell it out loud, forwards, and then backwards. So here's what it sounds like. B-I-L-L-L-L-I-B. -L 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 That's one of my loved ones. Now you think of one's name and spell it forward and backward. Go. Out loud. Pick another one. L-Y-N-N-N-N-Y-L. You get it. You do it. Good. How are you doing? Woo. You ready to go faster? No spelling. Breathing. Can you pass the talk test? You did with your spelling. Maybe you want to go even faster. Just go at your own pace, whether it's super fast, sort of fast, tempo, or just huh. take a breath. Best posture, whether you're seated or standing. Imagine a glass of water on each shoulder. Right hand near your chair, left hand, left leg stretches out. And see if you can float that left foot in the air. Breathe. Balance. Knowing you've got that chair. You know what else is another safety net you have? Putting your foot down. <laughs> you can put your foot down whenever you want to. Okay, well we're going to transition to a chair interval that will focus more on strength rather than cardio. So come around carefully to the front of your chair. Line your heels up carefully with the front legs so you can get ready to do some squats. Or just sit down mindfully, carefully. But take a moment, literally maybe a minute, to do your best squats. Trainers all over the planet suggest squats as a number one body weight exercise to help you live independently longer, stronger. Do your best, and then when you're ready, you can rest in your chair. And boy, I need a sip of water. So, as you get things down low, whether you're exercising or you're out in your garden, here's a tip, step to the side. Brace with your abdominals and your arm. Leaning to the side is easier on the low back. Step to the side, lean to the side. And enjoy some water. All right, we're going to be using some of our tools, but if you don't have them, don't worry. Just follow along. Alright, so we're going to use our tubing, but you can use the band as well. So this is just a simple rubber tube. 
You can take it by the handles and you can put it under your right foot. Now, the band is just going to provide some tension, okay? If there's slack in the band, it's not giving us any strength work. So we want to keep it looking more like a tightrope or an upright base strength than jumping rope. Got it? Good. So depending on your limb legs and length of your band or your tube, you might have to grab down a little ways. But use that right hand, same side as the leg, to brace yourself. Later on, we'll do this standing, okay? So the tube's under your foot. We're going to keep the wrist straight and the hand close to the body. And exhale or inhale as you do a one-armed row. Back is long and strong. Now, you may like to add a little core rotation. Do keep the wrist straight. Do keep the hand close to the body. So this would be like starting a lawnmower. That might be coming to a theater near us soon. This particular strength exercise is great for the bicep, the rear deltoids, the shoulders, and the upper back. And if we're rotating, it's great for the obliques and the core strength. Good. Make sure you take the tension off of that too before you take it out. And we're going to do the other side. Now, we'll do this again, second set, but I'm going to show you standing the next time. So if standing isn't where you're at right now with your abilities, no worries. Do it again seated. So, long, strong spine. Straight wrist, support your lower back and your spine by bracing with your hands in your belly. And keep that wrist straight as you test the waters. If you wanted more tension, you grab closer to your foot. If you want less, you grab further away. And then again, you can add that core rotation. Keep the tension on the tube and keep breathing. If you like to count a good number of repetitions, strive for might be 8 to 20. If you can do more than 20 of these, then you need to put more tension on your tube. If you can't do 8, you need to have less tension. But what if you could only do it without the resistance? Would you get benefit from this? Absolutely. That range of motion, that movement is going to make all of your movement easier. Okay, let's come back to the one-arm row. And let's do a core work in between. We're going to use a rubber ball. Any ball will do, but if you don't have a ball, it's not a problem. To strengthen our core, the rectus abdominis, and our grip strength. But a little note, if you have arthritis in your thumbs and it hurts, you don't need to squeeze the ball with your thumbs. That's with my thumbs, this is without. Get it? Wrist should be straight. There you go, with my thumbs. Okay, sitting near the edge of your seat. Get your feet a little ahead of your knees. Brace as if someone's going to pop you in the belly, but they won't. Tuck your tailbone under like a sad little puppy walk. Keep the back of your neck long. And lean back little by little until you feel gravity working against your abdominals. Should hurt your lower back. If it does, you've got a couple of options. You could Make the range of motion smaller and really tuck that pelvis under. Or you can lean all the way back to your chair and just bring your knee up. Hold the navel in and breathe. Exhale each time you lift the knee. Now you can be sliding up and down. If you want to progress and make it more challenging, you can bring your ball up and down.
could just do the grip strength. If your thumbs and your fingers are hurting, squeeze that ball and squeeze the air out each time. All right, that is a very effective exercise. Sort of like a sit-up, but we added grip strength. We know grip strength is highly correlated with increased independence and longevity. Sounds good to me. All right, what else can we do with the ball? We strengthen this part of our core. Let's strengthen the sides. And maybe some more shoulder stabilizer strengthening. We're going to sit near the edge of our chair and imagine a curtain in front of us that we don't want to lean into. And we're going to tuck the ball under our right arm. If it feels good. Shoulders down. Give it a squeeze. Make sure it's not going to fly out. Exhale each time you squeeze. We've got this wide base because we're going to start to add some side lateral flexion. I'm so glad I can be with you. Even though we're not together live in person, as we often are, we can be together this way. So, exhale. If you wanted to progress this, you could add a little weight to the other side of the teeter totter by lifting the elbow. If that hurts your arm, no problem. You get plenty of benefit. Squeezing, strengthening the lattice with dorsi and the shoulder. Rotate your cuff. And the obliques and the quadratus lumborum. Those are those long, strong muscles along your spine that help you to stand tall and sit tall. Let's try the other side. Sitting tall. Squeeze. Like the placement there? You can add your side lateral flexion. Breathing is very important while we do the strength exercises, especially ones that are a shorter range of motion or nearly isometric. If we hold our breath while we're doing this exercise, it may raise our blood pressure unnecessarily. So breathe, do your best. You can add that elbow reaching towards the ceiling to put a little bit more resistance, tension on the working muscles. Do your very best. And when you feel out of gas, you're right. You are the only one who knows how you're feeling, so pay attention, be mindful. We're going to tuck that ball away, get another sip of water, stepping to the side, leaning to the side, bracing with abdominals and the arm. Did you know if you get just a little dehydrated, it's the leading cause of dizziness. Or a leading cause of dizziness. Especially if you're on blood pressure medications. So, you know, we may be safely sheltering at home, but you can reach out to your medical team, your doctor. Um, there's a lot of telemedicine going on right now. And so this is a really important time to stay connected. But we're moving on. We're going to do a second set of cardio. And you have a choice, again, of being in your chair or in the air. I'll preview what this pattern looks like before I stand up. So you've got choices. Be, be deliberate, be mindful, and don't be ashamed to move in your chair. The only shame is not using the chair when we should. That's true of any assistive device. This chair is my assistive device for this class. All right, sitting tall near the edge of your seat. Let's try a pattern I call cha-cha. Anyway, it looks like this. Step out to the right, and then one, two, three, and then step out to the left, and march two, three. Step out, put your weight on that foot, and march. Best posture, and march. 
Now remember, our goal for perceived exertion, if we're talking about one being, okay, I can do that all day, and a 10 being, whew, I'm totally exhausted, I have to stop right away. Our goal is a four to a seven, and no pain. Okay, so this is slow. A lot of you want to go faster, I bet. Let's try it to tempo. Here we go. Step out, one, two, three. Step out, cha, cha, cha. Step out, move your arms. And you can keep moving in your chair or in the air. It's up to you. But I'm going to, if you want to, you can join me. Dig my heels in, get my hips back. And push my hips forward as I stand. We're going to be behind our chair so we can use it to check our balance. Because we're doing agility, balance, and coordination all together with this pattern. Are you ready? Let's step out slow to the right in a mini squat. And one, two, three. And to the left in a mini squat. I say mini squat because I want you to put your weight equal in your left and your right foot. Let's do it again. One more time, slow, and then go up to tempo. You ready? Here we go. Step out, one, two, three. Step out, quick feet. We've got our chair if we need it. Best posture, kind of put an imaginary glass of water on each shoulder. How are you doing? Good. Do you want to do another brain game? <laughs> That's good. Let's try it while we're going at tempo. We're going to be talking out loud so we know that we're not overexerting ourselves. I'll show you an example. This is a list maker. Now let's use the alphabet as a little mind jogger. Thinking of healthy fruits and vegetables. Starting with the letter A. How about apple? Banana? Cauliflower? Dandelion greens, <laughs> eggplant, <laughs> oh, fruit, mm -hmm. greens. <laughs> I'm going to break it down. You do your best with the alphabet list. Fruits and vegetables. Keep going. I want you to make it to Z. What's an X fruit or vegetable? If you do crosswords, there is a melon. Chinese melon with an X. Four more. Hey, do you want to try it even faster? Ooh. We'll have to get rid of the one, two, three. It sounds like this. Step, step. Here's what it looks like. Step, step, step. Little mini squat. So you can pretend you're skiing down a pristine slope. I'd rather be doing the salsa. However you're moving, whether you're dancing in your seat or on your feet or skiing, ask yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, perceived exertion, how are you doing? 4? I feel great. I could do this a lot longer. 8? I'm not sure I could do it much longer. That's great, but march it out. Okay, what else can we do? Got a couple more minutes before we return to the chair. We'll focus on strength again. Oh, I forgot to do the standing version of the of the one arm row. Well, that's where we're going when we want to get back to our chair. Okay, so we're gonna do just a little bit more here on our feet. I call this singles, doubles, and fours. Using your chair. Start with just a sort of a foundational mini squat. Good. We're going to be lifting our heels towards our hips. Ready? So kick your heels up. Little hamstring curl. Keep your chest lifted. Spirits too. Use your chair. You can make this really big and add arms. You can do both arms with a row if you like, or you can make it little. 
your choice. But these are singles, so one each side. Simple, right? Ah, but simple doesn't always mean easy. We're doing singles, but we're gonna do four more singles, four, three, two, then we're gonna do doubles, so two here. Ah, now we're starting to balance. We've got our chair if we need it. We can put our toe down if we want. We can do both. But the goal is to try to balance while doing these double hamstring curls. Good. How about four more doubles? Three, two, one. How about fours now? Four, three, two, switch. Four, three, two, switch. How are you doing? Good. Let's switch it up. We're going to stay with fours, but let's use a longer leg and do the hips. Abduction. That's hard. We're getting some hip strengthening here. Keep that foot flexed. Keep the body tall. Don't worry, we're getting close to momentary muscular fatigue. I am. If you are already there, good for you. Just march it out. And that's good. So we got some good hip strengthening here. Ah, take a breath. Be mindful. If you're already in your chair, you're in the right place. If you're sitting down, do so carefully, mindfully, getting those heels close to the chair legs. Keeping your head up as you get your hips down. Slow and controlled, and a little power up if you like. Now, if you're already feeling like sitting down, you're right. But if you want to do about, I don't know, maybe four more squats, go for it. You know what's going to work for you today. Squats are great for hip strength, thigh strength, foot and ankle strength, but you know what else they're good for? Adding bone density to your pelvis and your back. Ooh. Good time to get a sip of water. Step to the side, brace, knee to the side. As you get anything down low. So, I have shown you the one arm row seated. I'm going to show you the one arm row standing. But first, I want to use this tubing to strengthen our chest, fronts of the shoulders, and triceps. So, but, while we're seated, I want to show you how we can do a, a lower body exercise, and then we'll add a chest exercise. So, grab your ball. If you don't have a ball, you can just put your legs together and squeeze. My knees are kind of bony though. So, your feet should be just ever so slightly closer than your knees. Sitting tall at the edge of your seat. Squeeze. Very important to exhale as if you're blowing out a candle while you squeeze that ball. And then inhale if you can through your nose, like you're smelling your favorite aroma. Good. So, this inner thigh squeeze is going to strengthen our hip adductors. down with our heels and lift our toes. Breathing, I'm kind of over emphasizing the breathing, but you just do it at your own rhythm. And don't hold your breath. You can squeeze your gluteals isometrically while you do this, and that would be good. You can also brace with your abdominals, and that would add to the uh, benefit of this exercise. But take a lower body break as you set up for your upper body. And this is an option to put the two together. Putting that two behind your upper back so that it comes out underneath your armpit on the inside of your elbow where you would be giving blood if you are in good health. It's much needed right now. And our blood center in Dayton is all set up to do it safely with with um, a phone call to set up an appointment. Anyway, here we are. If I straighten my arms to do a chest press, there's not much going on here. Not much tension, not much challenge. If I want to make a challenge to 
change my strength. I'm going to grab the tube a little closer to my shoulders. Ah, now we're doing a push up or a push away. We're going to add, if you like, that ball squeeze, lifting our toes to strengthen our shins, pushing down with our heels to strengthen our hamstrings, breathing. So if you don't like the chest press, you can just do the thigh squeeze. If you don't like the thigh squeeze, you can just do the chest press. You could do them both. And guess what else you could do? You could do neither. You could stop. When you feel like a dull, achy, burning sensation in a muscle, no pain, then that means you've approached momentary muscular fatigue, and your muscles will get stronger. Let's take that band off, put the ball safely somewhere in our chair, and remember the one arm row seated? I'm gonna show it to you standing. Now, if you don't wanna do it standing, if you feel dizzy or you feel unsafe, you're right, you can do this in the chair. So, if you're standing, dig your heels in, Get your feet close to the front legs of your chair. That way, if you're ever getting up and you lose your balance or your knee buckles, oh, you're right there safely in the chair. We're going to work on the right leg, on the right side of the chair. Use the chair as your assistive device. You can just make a little loop with your band. Run the chair while you step through that loop. Put your weight down there on that. Ooh, I think I did this on the wrong side. Indeed, I did. I want to step through with my left leg. That way I've got my chair there. And in this lunge stance with my foot behind and up on the ball of it, nice tall torso, I could try that one arm row. If it's too easy for you, you can grab a little closer to the foot. If it's too hard, further away. If you want to really challenge yourself, you can go down a little and up. Keep that wrist close to the body and straight. If you want to add a little rotation and a big balance challenge, keep your hand on that chair. You're going to rotate and look back at that trailing elbow. This is an all body exercise that challenges and strengthens our upper back and shoulder and bicep, our thighs and our hips, our core, and it even strengthens our balance because we're looking off behind us. Make sure you get tension off of the tube before you step out and take it to the other side. Okay, use your chair, take your time. If you're seated, you're in the right place. If you're standing, be mindful. Use the chair. Keep that wrist straight. See how this side feels. Don't expect the left side to be exactly like the right. That would be nice, but it doesn't always happen. Add that little lunge dip if you like. Hinging at the hips and knees. Breathe. If you want, you can add that core rotation. You must use your chair, people. Breathing, doing your very best. I don't know what you're in training for, but I am so glad to have this training program. It gets me ready for the hardest athletic activity I know, which is gardening. I've been gardening a lot. Let's return to our chair, mindfully, if you're not already there. Feet close to the chair legs. Do your best as you sit down slowly. I've got one last strength exercise for you. And then we're going to do some stretching. 
the gentle, gentle guiding or coaxing of the knees outward. If you're very limber, you might have to be wider. But keep the knees pointing the same direction as the toes. And from here, we can add a little shoulder stretch. Breathe deep and feel that stretch develop. And then the other. I like to think of taking the shoulder blade from my back pocket into my front. Good. Walk your feet together. Let's get a little figure four stretch. This is very good for the external hip rotators. Sitting tall, you could cross your right ankle over the left and let that right knee drift down. And let the crown of the head drift up. If you're more limber, you may like to fold that ankle on top of your lap. Take a deep breath. Exhale and hinge forward. Whether your ankle's on top of the thigh, you're gently coaxing that knee down and hold your position. If your ankle's here, you're hinging forward, supporting on your lap. Sit tall, breathe in, and let's switch to the other side. Again, your left side may not be the same flexibility as your right. So, this is the other option. Try not to let that knee drift in. Keep the spine tall, supported as you hinge forward just about halfway to the lap, not more. And gently coax that outside of the knee down. We're going to continue, but I'm going to get a quick sip of water. Not quick, I'm going to be mindful and slow as we transition to our mindful meditation, relaxation. You can call it whatever you like, but it's an excellent practice. And before I forget, I want to say thank you. I want to feel thanks. I want to have an attitude of gratitude, and I hope you do too. I am very thankful for our, our essential services providers. Shout out to our leaders, especially our local leaders. And Governor DeWine's been awesome at this time. My new friend and hero, Amy, Dr. Amy Acton. They're giving great updates. I think this is the first day they've taken off. This is actually a Sunday for me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you understand that these local services are working hard to help you stay safe at home. If you're feeling anxious or lonely, that's normal. It's okay. But we hope you stay positive and definitely stay connected so you're not alone. We're going to take the next few minutes to breathe and I want to remind you to, to trust in science and reputable sources of information like the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, or the NIH, National Institute of Health. And then our local uh, authorities have really helped. And if you don't have access to the internet, no worries. The Yellow Springs Community Foundation has made the Yellow Springs news free the last couple of weeks. So you could Call the Yellow Springs Senior Center between 10 a.m. and noon, Monday through Friday. Give them your grocery list and include a YS newspaper because it's going to have all that information in there for you. Anyway, let's just relax. We were sitting at the edge of our seat because it's so exciting to be with you. But now we're going to focus on relaxing. So, you can sit back in your chair, get comfortable. Rest your arms on your lap, perhaps fingertips together. And focus on your breathing right now. As you breathe in through your nose, 
Think of smelling all the beautiful aromas. Perhaps at a time and a place where you are peace, everything on your to-do list is taken care of. You can use all of your senses as you just breathe in, filling your beautiful, big, strong lungs from the bottom to the top like a wave of fresh energy because that's what oxygen is. And as you exhale, think of releasing anything you don't need, any stress, any tension. So you can lower your eyes or close them and relax as you breathe in. Think of a place you really, really enjoy peace and tranquility, a time and place, and go there in your mind. As you breathe in, imagine all the smells you're smelling there. Let any tension from your face, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders just drift away. As you keep breathing at your own pace, imagine in your mind's eye what you see.